today is making some spears and bundies. What I'm doing with this is I'm straightening out of the fire. Just that oil's inside and eventually you can make these bends straight. If the stick doesn't want to break on you. Now that's going to take too much time. So this is one that I got earlier, and as you can see, I've straightened it out pretty straight. I've just got the rest of the bark and that to do, and it'll turn out like this to some degree. I suppose, and all I'm really going to do with these once I'm finished with them is decorate them and stick them on the wall. Um, with my bundies, all I have to do is debark them and burn them, and get all the rough pieces of wood off it. It's gonna end up like that. So where do you get the bundy from? Is it a root system or is it a branch or? These are all actually roots. I don't go out and get branches. Yep. Branches tend to dry out and they're a lot weaker than a lot weaker than the roots. To my knowledge, every, yeah. I I've heard that decent made bundies can crack concrete so if I if I do my job good enough I should be able to crack cement with this and bundi, we use the bundies for for if you can get, if you can get close enough to a roux you'd break a roux's leg I, I, I don't Reckon you'd get too close, but we had to break Rue's legs, Emu's legs. Um, I don't know the old fellas used them in war or war. Bad war. Must be in war, eh? Yeah, I'd. When someone does something wrong, they get hit on the knee, your ribs, and your head. I was more places be a... you get hit. And most of the most of the things that are wounded there, they got lo they loaded. So it's just weird. language. My language, I call it modern, and it's just magic. It's a, it's a, it's very powerful. So a little little slap like like that there. It can paralyze your knee, it can break your knee, break your ribs and, and knock you out for that quick. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be a hard hit. I'd yeah, I'd hate to be on the wrong side of one. And what about going back to the spears, where would we what is it hardwood or softwood or where do we source that from? Um I've actually gone out and picked the wrong wood that I've learnt from. The, what, what I learnt to make spears with was tea tree. And they're a lot straighter. Once you find a decent group of tea tree, you notice groups like that standing up around lakes and whatnot. That, that's what I go out and get. That, that's mainly what I'd go out and get. And they, I can, I can make them as straight as a broomstick if I sit there long enough. I, I've done it once before. I, I, I haven't done it in a while though, but yeah. And that's just with the heat of the fire to straighten them out like you Yeah, said, uh, yeah, no, it boils the sap inside and yeah. It, it's, yeah, it, it straightens it out. You bend it around your knee. So not who taught you? A bloke by the name of Uncle Max Solomon, my grandfather. He did a lot of work in and around the community with preschools and 
schools. Uh, eventually I want to take on his role and go and do it. And I just need some hours behind me first. <laughs> but yeah, um, that yeah, that's who taught me how to make a spear and cut out your boomerangs and. Um, with the boomerangs, is there any type of wood we use for that, or any type of tree I should say? Uh, not to my knowledge. Yeah. Um, you see a tree with a bend, you cut it out, it's good, very good. and you and you make your way through it. You carve your way through it, and eventually you're going to find a beautiful piece of wood in there, and it'll make a shape, and it'll come out and. You make it right and it'll fly. So look, you just make spears and bungees or what? You make boomerangs and kill boomerangs and, uh, and plastics and other stuff, like, stuff uh, like that? I've got some sticks at home that I'm ready to make into clap sticks and... All I've made these with, which is all I've got at home, is which is my knife and my saw. And I've got as far as this with my bundies. I've got just as far with the with me um spears and whatnot. All I need to do is burn them, get them back to smooth and I yeah. So how do you feel at the end of the day when you finish your bundies and spears? What sort of pride it gives you? The How's sense of accomplishment and being able to turn a rope and there's something that you could use just about every day. You can cut that end into a digging stick. And a digging stick's one of the most important tools you need out bush. So I've been told, you dig for your grubs, you dig for water. You can get your food with it. No, I know you Uncle Charlie, right? And I, um, I see now and again he, he, he makes snakes and that out of yeah. wood. Do you ever do any of that? I don't actually. Oh. I'd... It takes a level of concentration. Yeah. I don't have at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I was down in Melbourne here at the, the Wild Day Contra last year and he had a little store set up, thank you. Yeah. So he had some snakes and a couple of lizards and goannas, eh? Yeah. Now, yeah. he took that roll off top. Yeah. Um, could make decent snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle Charlie did him one better and he, he, he can actually make a lump of wood look like a real snake. Yeah, yeah no, he, I know. He's got a couple in his house that, yeah. <laughs> that had us kids screaming at one stage. Yeah. Okay, so apart from um, you know, making boomerangs and going for walks and, you know, um, I love making a canoe uh, out of the bark. Uh, um, tree. I was usually uh, engage in painting as a stress relief. Um, painting for me um, and painting like, like country is important to you know, as a recorded history. Um, a lot of the paintings from all over Australia are a lot different. People have their own stories, and their own designs, or the way they go about painting. Uh, but what I painted here is um, you know like a water system with billabongs, deep water holes. And, and um, that's what you see there. And uh, the red lines are the walking tracks that go, that you know, that are along the edges of the water for us to, you know, go and like, throw a line in or, you know, spear, you know, fish from. So, um, as basic as it is, you know, um, a story to a picture tells, you know, um, you know, it tells a lot of stories, I suppose. Um, and um, it's priceless too, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a good um, opportunity for not only us to continue culture, but you know, to engage in um, like a market. You know, um, paintings uh, for Australia. You know, um, uh, a lot of them bring in billions of dollars a year. Okay, um, and that's pretty much why they target you know a lot of indigenous um, uh, or Aboriginal people with their work. You know on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. So, yeah.
if you can try and keep it local and unique and put a story to it, then you know, you're on a winner. I think painting is a, um, like a genetic thing from the ancestors. It's in our blood. It's in our, you know, nature of, of, of Aboriginal people. So, you know, even if you, um, you know, think you could never paint, you know, you can only know if you try, you know, and um, the more more times you try, the better you get, you know. So, you know, pretty much from what I've learned, I've, you know, learned from a young kid, um, you know, first about, you know, um, I suppose what to eat, you know, in the life that surrounds us, uh, especially out here at Big Ties. Um, you know, growing up, learning how to survive as a kid. Uh, we used to camp quite often because that was the cheapest holiday our parents could give us because they never had any money to take us on a you know, nice holiday up the you know, um, up the you know, northern coast or anything, Queensland, you know. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, this place was here. This was a holiday place, you know. So, as kids we would uh, occupy ourselves with fishing, um, spearing, you know, during the day, swimming. Um, Diving in there to get mussels, you know, that would feed us for lunch. And then we'd wait for the families to get back from bean picking or something, you know, to get us a proper meal of soup or something, you know, around the campfire. And tell us uh, dream time stories of the past, you know, and of, of their um, uh, present experience, you know, when they were uh, also kids. So, um, yeah. You know, we kind of had a fun life and never really felt, you know, stressed or bored from mm. it, you know, because all that kept us occupied and, you know, some of you that would have experienced that, you know, uh, would know that, you know, that was the way of life and a stress-free life and a good life. And painting Bob Bay, that was a way of passing on stories, passing on tradition. Yeah. Teaching lessons in every aspect of that, ain't he? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And quite often, uh, well, common down in this area, I've seen a lot of the old fellas. They used to do a lot of carving yeah. with their art work. Yeah. Um, but that was a common theme. You know, not only you know painting boomerangs and stuff with ochre or natural paints that we have access to. Yeah. It's um, like they had access to the ochres and stuff like within the landscapes. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, and you know, quite often the carving was done, you know, um, not, you know, yeah, I, I suppose with a, with a, um, uh, what's it called, with a moist wood, yeah. okay, so that's pretty much, if you look at all the artefacts, yeah. they're usually shaped yeah. into the um, position that they are, uh, even with the spears, you know, you, know, you, you, you make the spears when, you know, when the wood's wet, yeah. and then, it's dried out through the fire to turn it from a soft wood to a hard wood. You know, so culture to me is, um, well, from what I learned, it's always been a simple process, but it takes commitment and work to to uh, finish the product. Yeah. Thanks.